Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 24, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Taking up your cross and following Jesus is associated with being a true follower of Jesus and receiving eternal life. So it's vital to understand what taking up your cross and following Jesus means. I'm going to be explaining the meaning of taking up your cross and following Jesus in this video. But before I do that, I highly encourage you to enroll in one of the free online Bible courses at AmazingBibleStudies.com. AmazingBibleStudies.com has two free Bible courses that you can enroll in called Storicals of Prophecy and Bible Answers. Storicals of Prophecy uses the stories of the Bible to illustrate prophetic truths, while Bible Answers is more of a topical study of Scripture. Some of the things you will learn about in these Bible courses is the reliability of Scripture, salvation through Jesus Christ, the Ten Commandments, who is the Antichrist, what is the mark of the beast, and more. Click on the link in the video description to enroll in one of these free online Bible courses today. Now back to the meaning of taking up your cross and following Jesus. The cross was a Roman instrument of death. It was very cruel. Subjects were often scourged first, which means they were stripped naked and brutally whipped. And if that didn't kill them, they were forced to drag a part of their cross to the place of crucifixion. They were then nailed to the cross through their hands and feet and suspended into the air where they would die of exhaustion and asphyxiation, which could take up to three or four days. Sometimes the process was sped up. That's why John chapter 19 verse 32 says the Roman soldiers broke the legs of the two men who were crucified next to Jesus so they wouldn't be able to hold themselves up to breathe and they would die quicker. And they also pierced the side of Jesus to make sure he was dead. Crucifixion is one of the most painful ways a person could die. Not only was crucifixion very cruel, but it was also very humiliating because the individual on the cross would hang there naked, sometimes for days, for onlookers to see. So in telling his followers they needed to take up the cross and follow him, Jesus indicated they needed to be willing to suffer bitter humiliation and even death for his sake. In fact, during the persecution of Christians in the Roman Empire in the 1st to 4th centuries, many Christians were crucified to death. So Jesus' words had a literal application. According to church tradition, the apostle Peter was crucified upside down in Rome because he felt unworthy to die in the same manner as his Lord. The apostle Andrew is also believed to have been crucified in Greece. As a matter of fact, all but one of Jesus' apostles were martyred for their faith, and that is the apostle John, who is believed to have died of old age after being imprisoned on the island of Patmos. Suffering and martyrdom have been a reality of the Christian faith from its inception. Throughout history, millions of Christians suffered and died for their faith. But Jesus doesn't ask us to do anything that he wasn't willing to do for us. Jesus was persecuted, and then he died on the cross for our sins. And in John chapter 15, verse 20, Jesus said, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. We are in a great controversy between good and evil. And the same demonic forces that persecuted Jesus also persecute the followers of Jesus because we are a threat to the dominion of Satan on earth. Not only do Jesus' words have a literal application in the sense that we have to be willing to die for our faith, they have a spiritual application as well. Jesus said that we need to deny ourselves and take up our cross. And that denial is in reference to the desires of our sinful nature. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 says, And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We need to crucify, that is, we need to put to death the desires of our sinful nature by resisting them in the power of God and surrendering our lives to God. Also, the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 31, I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. 
That goes to show that this is a continual process. You don't just surrender your life to Jesus once and then you're eternally secure. No. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 verse 13, But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Check out my Christian t-shirt store by clicking on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen or the link in the video description. Some of the shirts that you can find in my store include my No Jesus No Peace shirt, my Bible acronym shirt, and my Sabbath Keeper shirt. These shirts can be a good conversation starter to help you share your faith and proceeds from your purchase help keep my channel going. Not to mention I'm having a limited time sale, so if you order from now until Sunday, you will get a 10% discount on your entire purchase if you use the promo code BFB10 at checkout. Jesus' words about taking up your cross and following Him have both a literal and a spiritual application. The literal application is a willingness to die for your faith, and many Christians throughout history have lost their lives for their faith in Jesus. Some have even gotten crucified, like Jesus. The spiritual application is putting to death the old man of sin by resisting the desires of the flesh. Fortunately, Jesus doesn't ask us to do anything He hasn't already done. He lived a sinless life and died for our sins. And by His power and grace, He enables us to live and die for Him, should that be the case. If you would like to know more about Jesus and His plan of salvation, click on the screen to watch my video entitled, Five Steps to Salvation. Also, if you were blessed by this video, please like it and share it to help spread God's Word. Thank you for watching, and God bless you.